question. One, Aram, you just played here yesterday, and they played a game against Penn State here. Yeah. They've been playing in this tournament every year. They're the host of this tournament, and they've won the past two years. But then, like you said, the Friars are nationally ranked. So they would have that advantage just being overall, people would say, a better team. So I have a feeling this is going to be a really good game. Yeah, I have a feeling this is definitely going to be a good game to watch. Uh, I really am excited to watch <laughs> this game. Uh, we will be back for the intermission reports as we have the whole weekend mm -hmm. in between there, catching up and uh, breaking down what the announcers have said. Yep, and we're also going to have Ian Kist and Dante Pearson bringing you all the action here. Matt, I'd also like to say another reason, of course, that this game is going to be close. The scores yesterday, 6-0 and 5-0. Yes. So it's not like one team did significantly better than the other yesterday, even though they weren't playing against each other. Yeah, they were definitely uh, – they, they seemed to play similar games yesterday. Both teams were coming in favored to win against their opponents. They both did. Um, but both teams played a very fast and physical game. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to see how these two teams, since they played similar mm -hmm. yesterday, how they can play against each other today. Mm -hmm. And, well, the players are going to be coming out soon, so I think it's time we wrap this up so we can send it over to Ian and Dante in a little bit. That works Matt, for me. you want to send it home for us? I would love to. For the last pregame show mm -hmm. of the weekend. This of the year. <laughs> of the year. Of the, uh, this has been Matt Simkovic. Morgan Torsha. For RMU Radio, where it is, your campus, your voice.
Three games down, one to go. The championship match that we have all been waiting for. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Dante Pearson. Alongside me, my color commentator, Ian Kiss. We have the Robert Morris Colonials going against the number 11 team in the nation, the Providence Friars. Ian, what do you expect out of this matchup? <laughs> Hard hitting. Uh, I mean, the Colonials, both teams came out fast in their, in their blowout wins, shutout wins last night and uh, yesterday afternoon. So I think the Colonials just showing their dominance. The Friars are going to show their dominance. But if the Colonials can, you know, strike first and, and say that this is, you know, their ice, because, you know, they've been dominant on this ice, um, in recent years, especially in this you know championship game of this tournament, I think I think the Colonials will be all right. Yesterday, Robert Morris defeated Lake Superior State, who you just watched prior to this matchup, by a score of five to nothing. Goals by Moore, Tanjay, Ferguson, Jenny, and Lynch. Moore and Ferguson both had three points apiece. And Providence dominating as well, dominating Arizona State by a score of six to nothing where Foley and Wilkins were the headliners for that. So both of these goalies are going to get a little bit of action with hockey in the net for the Friars and Marat in the net for the Colonials. This will get a quick up and down pace for this game. Providence tries to clear the ice. Marat unable to take care of it. Got a scrum. Shot at the net. Marat is going to corral that one in. A stoppage and play with 18.36 left in the first period. It's the first matchup between the two squads. The Colonials always come into this game with a lot of... Uh, Success against ranked opponents. They beat UMass Lowell, who's top 10 two years ago. And then um, Quinnipiac, number eight ranked, if I, if I remember correctly, you know, come in and just kind of dominate. They dominated Quinnipiac towards the end. And for uh, UMass Lowell, it was, you know, kind of back and forth until the Colonials showed their dominance again towards the end. So Colonials, this always, like we said in last night's broadcast, they use this tournament as a way to propel their season. and. That's definitely what they're looking for this season with a very shaky start. The Colonials won the last two Three Rivers Classics and have been in the championship in the last four, losing in 20, 2013 and now in the title game today. As a race to the puck down on the Providence end, a scrum for it behind the net. That's going to be number 16 for the Colonials, Nick Perusik. Both teams just going at it right now. Not a lot's coming easy early on in this matchup like how they were yesterday. We saw Providence jump out on Arizona State pretty pretty hard yesterday and we saw the Colonials jump out on Lake Superior State pretty pretty rough yesterday as well. As we have a face off to the right of Marat. It's going to be Brady Ferguson and couldn't get a number on that one. There's a shot fired to the net, but a miss on the rebound by number 12, Eric Foley. Eric Foley having a goal and two assists yes, assist yesterday. Another scrum at the net, a miss fire by number 21 for the Friars. That's going to be Spencer Young. As we have a, a dead blown whistle. And a little bit of extracurricular towards the RMU bench.
Because now the puck will move down into the Providence area. And now we have a penalty. We have two players in the penalty box, actually. Number 44, Matthew Graham for Robert Morris. And number 10 for the Friars. It's going to be Scott Conway. Now both teams playing four-on-four four hockey. And it looks like we're going to get an icing call. One thing I've seen so far differently here, Dante, is you know the difference between Providence and Lake Superior State. The Colonials, you know, went up against last night to get to this game. You know, they're taking some, you know, some slap shots, you know, a good distance away from the goal, and we did not see. I believe it was roughly 20 some shots that the Lakers had, and you know, different style of offense that the Colonials have to defend against tonight. That is true. Both the Colonials and the Friars both got a lot of shots off yesterday. The Colonials getting off 38 shots while the Friars got off 43 shots. Both of these teams do like to shoot a lot, and they do like to put up the points. As we see a couple checks, Ferguson coming to the hand. Now we have a breakaway by, and that's going to be number 15, Josh Wilkins. Wilkins now fully pent up on against the wall Foley's going to bring it back out as he loses the puck feels like both teams are starting to starting to feel each other out right now None, neither of them really know how each other plays and this type of matchup that Providence wants because Providence a team that always going to the NCAA tournament Robert Morris definitely can give them a test early on in the season it's, but, you know, these two teams not, you know, they don't face each other, you know, face each other for the first time. And, you know, when, you know, Colonials, for example, you know, they kind of face you know, Penn State in non-conference action every year, it seems like. So, you know, they can feel how the, you know, how the program is, you know, adjusting for Penn State. But, you know, with a Providence team, you don't, you never see them before. You don't really know much about them. So, you know, it, it's good that the Colonials in the first five minutes here can, uh, can feel out their opponents. Now as we see a little bit of a scrum, it's going to be number 44, Matthew Graham, trying to get a shot off. And Eric Israel rips one. And the puck's going to sail right back to Israel. Israel going to send it down to the Providence end so they can get a line change. Both teams getting substitutions, and we're going to get an icing call. At this time... For both games yesterday, I believe, both teams have already scored in the first period. Yeah, the Friars wasted no time against Lakers. And the Colonials took, you know, the first five minutes or so, roughly to, you know, figure out Lake Superior, and then they just took off. And it was it was two quick goals, and then, you know, the dagger essentially um, with that third goal. Obviously, the first one was the winning goal with the shutout, but... You know, the Colonials were able to essentially put their opponents, so both teams were able to put their opponents away in in the first frame. But, you know, different different style, you know, more neck-to-neck -neck hockey tonight. Eric Israel's going to take the puck, and he's going to send it off the glass. Not before a Friar is able to get to it. Number 14 for the Friars, David Buns, since once toward the net. The Colonials just going to clear this one out. Friars looking a little bit uncomfortable now that the puck is on their side of the of the defense. You saw a lot yesterday whenever they played Arizona State. They had a lot of time against Arizona State down on the opposite end. It's going to be number 15 for the Colonial Spencer Dorowitz. As you hear the Robert Morris chants. And a bit of a scrum in front of the net. The Friars are going to take it and they're going to send this one off the glass. A little bit of pushing and shoving going on. This game's getting a little physical now. And that's the style of you know play the Colonials love. They're always one to kind of initiate the chippiness, initiate you know the grit, and that we're in. We're seeing that early on here within the first six minutes or so. And another huge hit right there by Luke Lynch. The sophomore right wing 
and he's going to send. That's going to be Robbie Hennessy to the bench, a little bit shaken up. As Robert Moore is definitely bringing the physicality to this matchup against the top-rated Flyers as a shot gets sent towards Marat. But it's going to be blocked away. This Colonial is able to corral it now. Scrum to the right of Marat. Now the Colonials are bringing the puck up, trying to get it over into Friar territory. Matthew Graham trying to get control of the puck. Shot gets fired in front of Marat, and Marat's able to corral it. Ben Marajas trying to get a, sh a quick shot on Marat. Not able to get that one home, as we're going to have a stoppage in play. At 12.49 in the first period, no score here, which we kind of thought was going to happen. Neither team's going to come, come out in open up the floodgates with scoring both of these goalies have yet to give up a goal in this tournament Marat and Hockey definitely showing showing their experience here today yeah, I think it's going to, you know, both teams I think it's going to come out to the, the uh, you know, when we've already seen a, a power play opportunity but when both teams kind of get a chance, I mean Especially for RMU, Providence, you know, plays such a crisp game. They don't commit a whole lot of, you know, errors in terms of penalties. So if the Colonials, that's when they're going to have to kind of, you know, make make a move. Especially, you know, get Brady Ferguson involved. You know, leads the team in goals and assists on the power play. There's time when he hardly scored on a five on, on five on five hockey. It was always with, you know, a man advantage at least. So. You know, that's when I think the Colonials have, we'll keep an eye on that one, Don, when, when a power play opens up for RMU to um, see how they attack that. The matchup Providence has to look out for is the three-headed monster that the Colonials have in Tanjay, Ferguson, and Moore. Those three have been a handful for teams to defend over the years as the Friars get the face-off and a shot sent up into the net where we're going to have another stoppage in play. Yeah, that one name of, you know, we, we always talk about Ferguson, but with Timmy Moore, you know, like we always say we want more, 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 you know, from him as a senior. He, you know, didn't really hear his name say his name, you know, a lot in the beginning of the season. But, you know, last night, you know, two assists early in the game, a goal, you know, the second goal of the game, I believe. So, you know, him, him involved, and if you get, more Ferguson and Tonj going. It, it's going to be lights out even moving forward from this game. As Colonials control the puck and it's sent forward, and that's going to be number six, Nick Jenny. Jenny's going to send a shot fired to Hockey, and that's not going to hit home. As now the Friars get going, number 21 for the Friars sends a shot towards Marat. That's going to be Spencer Young. Spencer Young unable to connect. On the one few chances that they've had a clean shot at Marat. You wonder as this game goes on, will the will the pace of the game start to pick up? Because Robert Morris, they like to get up and down the ice and force teams to move quickly. As Providence comes away with the face off. Providence going to send this one into the into the boards. It's going to be Tonj firing it, firing it down, getting it into the Providence zone. Tonj going to come back away with it. He's going to fire that one across. A shot taken, and that's going to be Robert Powers. And yeah, we always see the Colonials, you know, be patient, especially on on the power play. But you know. When, it, when it's still five on five hockey, you know, they're outshot right now, seven to three. And we see the Colonials last night, you know, they just put up 
shot after shot, and you know, the five nothing win was the result. So I think the, the Colonials can, you know, as we see a save by Marat there, if the Colonials can get going more offensively, kind of a little stagnant right now, nothing accruing. Some Providence fans wanting an offsides on the Colonials. As Taj just gonna flip that one up, and now a scrum at the boards. One team trying to come away with the puck. Either both teams just jousting for it. And that's gonna be number 17 for the Colonials. Brandon Watt fighting for that one. This problem is just trying to send that one down. Shot fired towards the net. Hockey's gonna come away with that one as Providence is gonna set up and get ready to go on the offensive. Robert Morris now controls the puck. Both teams unable to get steady offensive flow going in this game. As you see a lot of a lot of mishandles going on between the two teams. When the Colonials, you know, do get possession of the puck, it's quickly quickly intercepted or interrupted by a by a black sweater. The Friars in all black, black tops black bottoms and the Colonials in the white tops and blue bottoms. Now the Colonials have the puck down on the Providence in behind the net. A shot fired towards hockey, unable to connect. It's going to be number 10, Scott Conway for the Friars taking the puck up. As Marat's going to corral in a shot. We're going to have another stoppage in play at 927. Like we said earlier, the Colonials have the Colonials have won three out of the five Three Rivers Classics. This is the six. They beat Miami in 2012, UMass Lowell in 2016, no, in 2015, and Quinnipiac last year in 2016, and they have won the last two. They beat Quinnipiac last year by a score of five to two. Timmy Moore had two goals in that game. Talk about how big he has to step up. And Marat had 43 saves in that game as well. Decent sized crowd on hand for the championship bout. It's always good to see, you know, last night both games a little light on the on the piers, but even in the consolation game right before this game. You know, a nice little crowd in tonight. I'm liking the turnout so far. You know, we'd like to see more, but you know. As this tournament gets you know bigger and bigger every year, and even with Robert Morris, you know, a local team, if you're a Pittsburgher or even from the local area, you know, come on out, support, support college hockey. Couple shots fired at Marat, unable to connect. Now scrum to the left of Marat, and the Friars are able to come away with it. And number 19 for the Friars, Jason O'Neill sends a shot at Marat, and there's a big scrum at the net, a bunch of bumping. The Friars unable to come away with it, and the Colonials are going to send this one down. Now the Friars coming back up. It's going to be number 24 for the Colonials, Alex Tonge. The puck sent up top, and that's going to be blocked away. As the Colonials come away with it, that one's going to get sent, fired off towards the back of the ice. Now the Friars just holding on to it trying to set up some offense. The Colonials come away with another steal. Sean Giles pushing it up, and giving it to Alex Tonge. Tonge now to Ferguson. A shot blocked away. That shot taken by number 21, Robert Powers. Powers unable to come away with that one as he's just going to fling this one up. 
to get a line change for both for their for the squad. That's twice so far in, the, in that recent sequence that the Friars were able to block shots and not let the puck get close to their goalie. And and, and, and that I think that's another thing that's going to be key, as you know, the Colonials last night, Lake Superior was not even near their goalie a lot of the times, you know, so different the Colonials may have to adjust a little bit, can't take some long shots, have to move it closer, be patient, and you know, you know, close close some close in on some gaps instead of you know having some breathing room out top, up top rather. A fight of a shot fired at Francis Morat. Morat's able gonna is able to corral that one into his chest. That was Scott Conway firing that one at Marat. Fryer is able to have a couple of shots at the net on the Colonials. They're getting the shots off, but Marat, one of the better goalies here in this tournament, and the Fryer is going to have to find a way to sneak one past them. Right now, the Fryer is killing Robert Morris on the shots, 15 to 3. And that's kind of the difference that we saw in both the Friars match and the Colonials match yesterday. As we have another face off. And the Colonials are going to come away with that one. Colonials are going to send this one up. Nick Perkusik in, in pursuit. Now the Friars are going to clear this one out as Marat. He's just going to wave it off and give it to a Robert Morris player. Now the Friars have it again. A shot fired at Marat. That's going to be Tommy Davis. Tommy Davis unable to connect. Now a couple moves inside the lane. The shot off the rebound. Good and gets past Marat. And the Providence Friars get on the board. One to nothing. Scott Conway able to get that one off the rebound. Let's take another look at this one. And one thing that you know I didn't really say much about it yet because it really needed didn't really need to be brought up. But again, up back in my head, I always keep an eye on what I call the, the juicy rebounds off of off of a goalie's pads or any part of the goalie. And right there, friends. <coughs> Francis Marat, who's typically really good at controlling, you know, pucks and keeping them right in front of him, couldn't do much. Says that one just deflected right off his pad and right to a, right to a Friar stick. Last year we saw Robert Morris give up a goal to Quinnipiac, and then Robert Morris ran off five goals in a row to win the Three Rivers Classic. Robert Morris is just going to slow this down. The puck's just sent up, and now the Friars are going to take control. And Dante, I think a, a big thing here is, you know, you're down one nothing. Okay, who, who cares? You know, go back at it. Let's not. I think that's one thing with the Colonials. Um, some of, you know, the problems they've had this season. When they get down, they get down on themselves. They start, you know, panicking, trying to do too much. And I think we've seen that, especially with, with the guy between the pipes, Marat. And that's when he, you know, his struggles have. My, what I see is his struggles, you know, have have arose when that happens. So right now, just to keep to keep everybody contained. You would think that this team wouldn't get rattled too much considering they're the third oldest team in the nation. Led by seniors and juniors for the most part. As Robert Morris is able to come away with the puck. It's going to be number 28 for the Colonials. Luke Lynch showing a little bit of flash. Tonge now with the puck. Tonge. In threatening zone now to give to Ferguson. Ferguson loses the puck. Tonge is going to try to get it back again. Tonge now weaving his way through traffic. Now a shot ripped towards hockey, unable to connect. Now the Colonials still have the puck in Providence zone. Now a shot blocked. This Colonial is going to have to go back to track it. Now the Friars able to set up some offense and now have some fresh bodies out there on the ice. As Eric Israel is going to hold the puck as Robert Morris sets up. Another thing I've noticed, not, not many stoppages as we're already at 420 and counting here in the opening frame. 
pretty clean game for you know, the most part. And that's, you know, that, that that's a good thing because you're limiting the penalties. But that's also, you know, if you got to think about, you know, fatigue. You know, the, just those little 30-second stoppages can, can really help a player, you know, catch their breath. Now we're under four minutes here in the first period. Now the Friars back into Robert Moore's territory. Eric Foley, who we've seen in this tournament play huge, sends a shot towards Marat, sending it too high. Now the Colonials in a scrum with the Friars. Friars getting the puck back and now keeping it in Robert Moore's territory as both teams will make a line change. Now the Colonials will set up shop trying to get down into Friar territory. Now the puck's just sent up. Now all the way across the ice in the Providence territory. The Colonials possess it. Nick Jenny sends a shot firing, unable to get the rebound. And now we have a penalty on the Friars. It's going to be on Number four for the Friars, it's going to be Ben Mirages. You know, here we go. The power play opportunity for the Colonials with a Friar in the box. Let's see how, you know, see definitely number 12, you know, Brady Ferguson on the ice. Obviously, you have to keep him out there as he, he has a knack of finding the back of the net in these, these power play opportunities. One thing about the Friars is that they're one of the be better teams in the nation at killing penalties, ranking fifth in the nation, killing about 87.5% of the penalties. And we saw yesterday both the Colonials and the Friars didn't give up one power play goal as the Friars were able to connect on one power play goal themselves, going one for nine yesterday. But now the Colonials will be on the power play for two minutes, three minutes, ten seconds left here in the first period for the Colonials. We have a face-off to the left of hockey. It's going to be Ferguson and Conger, I believe, on the face-off. Colonials are able to come away with it. Mirages, two for tripping at 16.50. Now the Colonials looking to set everything up right. Five on four hockey. As Ferguson loses the puck and now the Friars have it on a little bit of a break. And the shot gets fired towards Marat, unable to connect home a little bit far left. Now the Colonials possess it. Ferguson, Ferguson's gonna cross the line. Now he's threatening, he sends a shot and it's gonna be too far left of hockey couple of misfires from both teams. Now the Colonials. Tonge pent up on the boards by Davis. Sent to Tonge. Back over now over to Ferguson. Ferguson's going to line one up and it's going to be too high. Now Robert Moore still controlling the puck. Not making Losing a little bit of time left on this power play. About 45 seconds left. Eric Israel with the puck now, sending it over to Lynch. And now the Friars are going to clear this one out. 30 seconds remaining in the power play. 140 left in the first period. And the Colonials are now pushing the pace. Shot gets fired. Shot taken, that's going to be blocked by the Friars. The Colonials setting it up. Pass over to Lynch. Lynch going to send one towards the net, and that one's not going to be able to go. Dorowitz tried to backhand that in. That's able to fall. Lynch fires another one. That's going to be blocked by the Friars. Colonials had their best chances at the end of that power play, but unable to connect on either chance. One minute remaining in the period. Yeah, no wonder, like Dante you said, they're one of the best and the Friars are in killing in the penalty kill. They, they, you know, those look like an untraditional, you know, power play opportunity 
um, a team on, on on the power play. The Colonials just couldn't, you know, muster it much offense. Couldn't, you know, settle it down and kind of dictate how the how that play for that two minutes is going to go. The Friars, you know, are able to get sticks on the pucks and and prevent any clear opportunities. A shot by number 16, Nick Perkusik for the Colonials. That off the pads of hockey. And now the puck's going to get sent down towards Marat, and we're going to have an icing call. 20.6 seconds left here in the first period. one nothing score. Providence leading the Colonials. Providence also has an 18-6 shot lead on the Colonials. And you would think that this game would be much closer if you were watching it here in person, but the Colonials are unable to get any shots off. Now we have a face-off to the right of hockey. It's going to be Ferguson and Conger. And Ferguson comes away with it, but now the Friars come away with it. And the Colonials get it right back. Eric Israel steals it. Ferguson's going to send it across cross ice now the friars possess it and that's going to be it for the first period the providence friars lead the robert morris colonials by a score of one to nothing the friars clearly out shooting the colonials here in the first period marat trying to hold on strong anything that you saw from that first half that robert morris can take into the second period I like the you know the the aggression towards the end. I mean, I think the Colonials have kind of figured out how Providence, you know, in 20 minutes is a lot of hockey. So I think if the Colonials can just you know adjust, make a few adjustments, you know, see what Coach Derek Schooley does, I think the Colonials will be fine. You know, you know, go come in up going the opposite way they, they just did. I think you know they did they didn't try to do you know too much. What I'd like to see after that first goal, but again, I the Eric passes and you know, just, just staying calm. All right, folks, we'll be right back with the second period. We have our halftime show as usual. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back here on RMU Radio.
Welcome back after the first period of play between the Providence College Friars and the Robert Morris University Colonials. Uh, Morgan, what did you see that period? I saw Luke Lynch going at it, so I'm going to tell Lynch you. Luke Lynch going at it. That is <laughs> an extremely accurate description of that first period. Um, so the Friars are up one to nothing for the Colonials at the moment. Uh, there's still time for that to change. Morgan, we never made our predictions. Uh, we made them off the air, but so that everyone that's listening to us can know. What did you say? I know it's up Friars 1 right now, but I'm still saying Colonials got it. You're still you saying You disagreed with it? me, though. I did disagree with you. I have the Friars winning this game by a score similar to 4-2. to two. It's Not very specific, I, but very I, can, specific. I can see that happening. Um, Why? Just because the <laughs> Colonials are a very fast team, uh, but the Providence team looks a lot. Not a lot, but they definitely look noticeably faster. I was, I noticed something weird that I would like to point out. Okay. So, like, you know when they have to bring players off the ice so they can switch it out, put new players on the ice? Yes. They a hit the change. ground. Thank you. I did not yes. know the proper terminology. They hit the ground running going out there. They're out there so fast. But when it comes to the Colonials, it's a little bit. It's like a build up to get yeah. back out into the game. So like, it's something weird. But like, it's something like as someone that doesn't know hockey very well, like notice right away. It stuck out to you, yeah. Um, so I have some notes here. Uh, Lay them on me. The Friars have a lot of traffic in front of uh, Francis Murat. That is definitely um, for sure. If you look into Francis Marat at all, you can tell um, he's a very, very good goaltender, especially for the Colonials. Uh, he stands on his head most games, and he's making huge saves mm. all season. It's been very hard to beat him. Um, so that's something that the Friars must have noticed or looked into, something like that, because they're having a lot more net traffic than they did yesterday. Mm. Um, but that's just something that I picked up on. Uh, I have Luke Lynch is going at it. That's for sure. <laughs> you can tell. Uh, home crowd, when they were announcing the starting lineups, he did get a little bit of the hometown cheer when they announced he is from Pittsburgh. But it's uh, he is definitely fired up and ready to go for today. Yeah. I mean, I, I, know I'm a, I know I'm a yes man, but I couldn't agree with you more on that one. Um, you can also notice last game, uh, even though – the Lakers beat the Sun Devils. The Sun Devils had way more shots yes. than uh, excuse me, the Lakers did. But here right now, the Friars have 18, and the Colonials only have six, and the yes. Friars are up. Well, uh, something that I've noticed, it's not that the Colonials aren't generating the offense. I said this earlier, but the Friars players are blocking every shot that they possibly can. Um, they're hitting off anything. They're taking knees and they're taking shots right to the chest. They're getting sticks in shooting lanes and tipping them out of play. They are doing everything that they can to make sure that that puck doesn't even get to their goalie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what do you think is going on in the locker room right now? Uh, in the locker room right now, uh, Coach Schooley for the Colonials has to be saying, you know, they have to see the lanes. They can't just shoot the puck instinctively. Um, and that's what they're doing at the moment. They are just turning and firing the pucks, and that's letting the Providence players block them. Uh, so they have to wait and make sure that they have a shot before they shoot the puck. Mm -hmm. That's something that I would say if I was Coach Schooley. Uh, as far as Providence goes, you really can't be mad. They're up one nothing um, after one. They're playing good. They're blocking shots there. Not necessarily making big hits, but they're taking the hits and getting right back up and going. No one's laying on the ice. They're willing to sacrifice their body for the team, which is something that uh, goes really goes a long way in hockey. It definitely does. Mm -hmm. All right, Matt. So any final thoughts before we end this intermission report? Final thoughts is, I don't know, this is going to be a really interesting two periods ahead of us, that's for sure. All right, Matt, take us home. Take us home. <laughs> All right, we'll do, Morgan. So... Uh, for RMU Radio, where it is your campus, your voice, this has been Matt Simkovic. Morgan Torsha.
One period down, two to go here at PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where the Robert Morris Colonials are trailing the Providence Friars by a score of one to nothing. Ian, give me a little bit of statistics about what happened there in the first period at Paul Robert Morris. So before I actually get to to the stats, one thing I'm gonna what I'm gonna point out here is obviously you listening, you know, cannot you know see this, but the fact that we Dante, you and I were talking about where the Colonials were shooting the puck, they're shooting far back, and that being the Colonials and the Colonials, that's not that's, that's not gonna that's not gonna go over well and happen um, with this Friars team and defense. They have to crash the net more, and I think if you if you do that, I think we're gonna see. Um, you know, the Colonials get that get that goose egg off the scoreboard here in the second frame. But again, the one thing though, <laughs> we like to point out that, you know, the Colonials are being outshot 18 to 6, but if this is anything like our like the first game here in the consolation game, how many shots you take doesn't matter because <laughs> because like Superior State I had, you know, twenty-nine shots I think maybe, and they won four one. So, you know, definitely if the Colonials, but I do think the Colonials need to get more shots um, be, and move it up because the Friars are doing a good job blocking the shots right now. But in order to make shots, you've got to take the shots. So Robert Morris is definitely going to have to pick up the pace here as we get this period underway. Is this when we bring up that, that very cliche Wayne Gretzky, Wayne, Wayne Gretzky quote, was that him? You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Uh, you miss 100% of the shots that you do not <laughs> take. <laughs> that cliche. The, the most cliche term. Wayne you, Gretzky or uh, Spencer's telling me here, uh, Michael Scott <laughs> from the office. <laughs> Colonials taking the puck and clearing this one out towards the Providence. The Providence zone as Tonge is in pursuit. Now the Friars pushing the pace. It's going to be number 26, Brian Pino. Pino now defended by Colonial. Colonial loses his stick. Now it'll be number 21, Robert Powers, as we have a penalty on the Friars. And maybe that's why Powers lost his stick, and that's going to be... That's going to be number 15 for the Friars. Josh Wilkinson to the box for the Friars. And now the Colonials back. The Colonials back on the power play with 18 minutes and 10 seconds left. We have a face-off to the left of hockey. Robert Morris is going to come away with the face-off. This is Puck's going to get wrapped around. Now the Friars have possession. That Puck's going to be sent up to number 21, Spencer Young. Young's just going to run a little bit of time out. Now the Colonials are on the move. Lynch trying to get Robert Morris into position. Now the Colonials moving the puck from side to side, but unable to capitalize. The Friars steal the puck once again, and Friars are doing what they do best. Like we said earlier, the number five team in the nation at killing the penalty. And the Colonials can't even set up an offense yet. Yeah, the means kind of you know intriguing seeing that you know the Colonials you know out here you know, struggling a little bit so far, and the fact that they already had you know a good you know 20 minutes to try to figure it out. I mean, this is kind of you know the opposite direction. You want, if you're a Colonials fan, you know that you want to see your team take right now. Eric Israel is gonna retreat as there's 30 seconds left in the power play. And that puck's going to be stolen by a Friar. And now Robert Morris controls the puck again as this is going to be sent up on top of the boards. 
Now Luria with the puck making a couple moves, trying to get a shot off towards hockey. And that's going to be a little bit far left. Now the Friars are going to clear this one out as they have about five seconds left, successfully killed another penalty. And now a couple of, a couple passes in front of the net, and Robert Morris gets that one to go. That's going to be number 26, Riley Rissling. That one bouncing off a couple of Robert Morris Colonials defenders. Yeah, what a goal again. That's just a pure example. It's looking like it may be reviewed here as the refs are going over to the scores table. So we'll see what that's all about. But assume they, you know, this goal stands to being at the right spot at the right time. That this one goal looks like it's going to be in question and looked at again by the guys in stripes. That goal bounced off a couple of defenders, that and that actually might have been number seven, Michael Luria. That definitely like came off Luria's stick, but is is goalie interference maybe in question? Who knows? I don't, I don't think. It doesn't look may, maybe because he made contact with with hockey, but. But that actually might have been Luria's goal, yeah, like you definitely. said, because he might have tipped that one in. It definitely looked like it was a tip from his stick. I, don't, I think that's pretty clear. I just think it's maybe goalie and because he hockey looked up and he said put his hard hands right up and said come on. So um, but it is always, you know, looks that it could be in the closest favor that it was a goal called a goal on the ice. But they're definitely, you know, taking a look at this. To me, I I I, I don't know. You know, it's different. Look, sometimes you know different referees. It's what constitutes. You know what is goalie interference, and sometimes some refs let you know it, it wasn't severe enough, and that looked like it could have been you know wishy washy, 50 50 here how this one can play out under review. Luckily, we're not talking about football, and what is the catch? Surviving the ground. But that one bouncing off a bunch of Colonials defenders. Nick Jenny with the original shot, and then but, who we thought had to bounce back, Riley Wrestling, but. Luria might have gotten the tip in, but was standing in front of hockey and could have been goalie interference. But like you said, Ian, that being called goal on the ice helps the Colonials a slight bit more that way if there's not enough evidence to it overturn like it. Here they have a call. Referee's going to skate out. This could be game changer right here because this would be a big goal, obviously, for the Colonials. And here we have a clean goal. Good goal. And that is huge. And again, now that's, you know, even. Originally, it was to Riley Wrestling. We'll get that one to you whenever they announce it. But now the score is tied up at 1 1 with 16 08 left to play in the second period. The Colonials doing a little bit what they did last year, giving up the first goal and then scoring a bunch unanswered. The yeah, the Colonials catch fire, even, you know, going off of last year in this game, but even this season, even last night, for example. One goal, boom. Second goal, boom. Third goal. And that's how we, you know, to see the Colonials build these leads in games. They get that first goal. And they just take off. Face off one by the Colonials. The puck's going to be sent over to Jenny. Jenny's going to send it up to Lynch. Lynch is going to take a shot, and that's going to be deflected. And they do officially give the goal to Ryan Wrestling. They're going to give Jenny and Ferguson the assist. Lynch on the move, on the break, and he's going to have a three on two, and that's going to be deflected. And the Friars come away with that as Luria tries to poke that one away. The Friars get into the attack zone. That shot taken towards Murat. It's not going to be able to connect home. And now the Friars have a little bit of a break, a one-on-one -on -one action, a shot taken at Morat, and that's going to be blocked. And that was number 26 for the Friars. Brian Pino seemed to have called his name a lot today for the Friars. Pino, a senior, is just two points shy coming into this game from 100 points on his career, having 34 goals, 64 assists in his career. 
Brady Ferguson having four points for the tournament. As Robert Morris is able to come away with the faceoff as Tonge is just gonna send this one into fire territory and the Colonials are gonna rush towards it. As Tonge comes back away with a give to Ferguson and now the Friars are able to maintain possession. That's gonna be Foley, Foley. Kind of like the Ferguson on the opposite side, able to score and able to dish it out. So now the Friars have possession in Robert Moore's territory. And that puck's gonna be sent all the way back, making the Friars chase it. The Colonial's able to get a line change now Foley stuck and Robert Morris is able to come away with it that puck's going to be sent up and now the Friars come back away with it now in Robert Morris territory as the Friars still maintain possession that shot's going to be sent towards Morat and the Friars still maintain possession Robert Morris defense is hounding this Friars offense making life difficult for him a lot more in this second period as we're going to have a blown whistle as that puck went high up off the glass and we're going to have a and we have a penalty and that's going to be number 22 I believe for the Friars and that's going to be apologies people It's going to be Vamal Sukumaran. He's going to get two minutes as we have a stoppage and play to get the extra ice off the off the playing surfaces. 13.50 left to play in this second period. Ryan Rissling able to put in a goal with 16.04 left to play in the second period. And Robert Moore's defense definitely, Robert Moore's defense has stepped its way up in the second period, making life a bit difficult for Providence. Yeah, you know, dictating, you know, their defensive zone, preventing, you know, the Friars from getting anything. I think the Friars definitely won the defensive game in the first period, but so far it has to go to the Colonials here in the second frame, you know, dictating the offensive zone. Oh, well, you know, preventing, you know, defense from having to do much work. And a couple rebounds, and that's going to be a miss for the Robert Morris Colonials, wishing they can have that one back. And now a shot sent to the middle, and that's going to be blocked. And now Ferguson has it at the top. Ferguson, that shot gets blocked. He's going to send it over to Israel. Israel's going to send it back to Ferguson, back over to Israel. Israel's going to move towards the middle. He's going to send that one over to Moore. And now Ferguson back with the puck. Puck's sailing behind the behind the goalie net. Ferguson still with the puck. Now over to Tonge. Tonge's going to take a shot. That's going to be far left and upstairs. This is Puck's going to sail back towards Robert Morris' area as Israel comes away with it, pushing the pace. And now he's going to weave his way through a bunch of Providence defenders, take a, a soft shot, and hockey's just going to corral that one and stop play. Colonials definitely getting their shots off here in the second period. Way better than what we saw in the first. Like Ian said, a lot of shots were taken by the new, by the blue line. And not a lot towards the net. As Robert Moore still on the power play. As the puck is sent over from side to side. This puck's going to be sent up top. Now over. And now Graham with the puck. That's going to be sent back and over again over to Montenudo. And the shot's going to be fired, and he's going to have a missed shot, and Hockey's going to be able to take that one in. It was Luke Lynch. That one coming off his stick a little bit wrong. Wishing he can have that one back. 34 seconds left on the power play for the Colonials. This puck still remains on the Providence side. 
as Robert Morris wins another faceoff, and Ferguson tries to take a quick shot towards the net. Hockey's just going to lay on this one. Ferguson wins another faceoff, two in a row. Now sent over to Tonj. Tonj's going to take a shot towards the net. That one's going to go right off the pads of hockey. Now the Friars trying to see if they can come away with it, a little bit of a scrum. Now the puck's going to be sailed all the way back, sending Ferguson to go chase it. Five seconds remaining here on the power play. Now the Colonials looking to set up a little bit of offense, and the power play is now over as Nick Jenny tried to weave his way through traffic. And they're going to get him for offsides. Eleven forty-seven left to play in the second period for both teams. A one-one game. Last year, the Robert Morse Colonials finished twenty-two, twelve, and four. 15, 10, and 3 inside the conference, losing the conference championship to Air Force by a score of 2 to 1. And then Air Force went on to lose to Harvard in the NCAA tournament in the second round. And Providence had lost to Harvard last year in the first round to Harvard. They finished 22, 12, and 5 last season. Both teams come into this contest coming off huge wins. Robert Morris coming into this game at 8-11-1, 7-7-1 the Atlantic Hockey Conference. And Providence sitting at 11-7-1, 6-4-1 inside their own conference. As we resume play here, scrum down on the Robert Morris side as Robert Morris trying to see if they can come away with the puck, and they do. And now over to Jenny. Jenny's going to send this one up. Robert Moore still trying to maintain the puck as Providence sends this one up. And both teams make a line change, so a little bit of sloppy, sloppy play here. One thing here, Dante, that, you know, I think a lot of people that I kind of keep thinking on is that People, you know, they're like, no way can Robert Morris, you know, looking at the first half of the season, no way, you know, can they beat a, can they beat a ranked team with the you know, record they have. But I think most teams, they say, they go into games thinking, you know, we're playing a ranked team, but, you know, we, we don't think about that. We all know that that's not always true. If they, if that gets into people's heads and they get, you know, down on themselves early when they, you know, get down to a, a ranked opponent. But I think the Colonials truly don't let that bother them. As a team, they're getting better on a three-game winning streak dating back to early two games against, you know, Mercyhurst and then last night's semifinals win against the Lakers. I truly think that the Colonials don't let their opponents' ranking get in their heads. They don't care. Now the Colonials have the puck and a shot sent towards hockey and another shot fired towards hockey. That one's going to sail a little bit off the mark. It was Robert Morris getting a couple shots off and that was number eight, Eric Israel ripping off that second one. Elias Gantus ripped off the first one as Providence is going to chase this puck down not before Robert Morris is able to to get it. Gantus now with the puck setting up the offense for the Colonials. Providence able to keep that one now trying to pin Robert Morris down on its own side. And now the Friars are on the offensive. Puck sent over to Mirages. Mirages is going to misfire his shot. Now Providence still on the offensive. And the Colonials are able to get that one out. Now four on two break for the Colonials. That one's going to be sent over to Lynch. Lynch pass misfired and sends a Colonial into the net. 
And that was a huge break for the Friars because it was a two-on-none situation. It just had Hockey by himself with two other defenders, and it, that could have been ugly. It wasn't obviously the result that you know everybody in this arena was looking for or expecting, but what a what a sequence there. I mean, they got you know ahead of you know two you know um, the breakaway two two nothing on the breakaway, and just you know just a little misplacement of the puck. Um, you know, when Israel was ahead of it, was crashing into the literally crashing into the net. But I think it was a good idea and was, you know, a, a, a good setup. It's just like, you know, it's a game of inches and that came into play with the puck a little bit behind him. But I love that sequence, sharing the puck. I thought for a second Lynch was going to, you know, take it himself. But that's big. Don't be selfish. Dish it off and, you know, inches away from a goal. Great play there by the Colonials as you heard Ian Kiss say. Now the Colonials back on the power play. Number 17 for the Friars. Shane Cavanaugh is in the box for two minutes. And Luke Lynch, brother of Robert Morris, Zach Lynch. Zach, one of the better players here at Robert Morris in recent history. And the Colonials controlled the puck off the faceoff, and now the Friars are going to try to clear this one out. Israel is going to chase this one back, trying to get everybody back on sides before moving again. Israel is going to send it back to Ferguson. Ferguson's going to weave his way through traffic. That one's going to get sent off the glass, and Robert Morris is going to have to go back chasing that one. Colonial set up shop. Now they're on the move. We give over to Tonge, over to Ferguson. Ferguson's trying to set that one up for Luria. Tonge comes back away with it. Tonge wrapping around the, the goalie's net. Not a lot of shots have been taken since that first goal. Because Israel's going to take a shot from the top of the key, and that one looked like that one went in. And the Friars are able to clear that one. You saw this. You saw this arena about to get on this feet, uh, get on their feet. Israel sent that one out from deep. I thought that one was able to slip behind hockey. Yeah, I thought we were about to hear hear the siren here in this arena, but just you know, again, I always break game of inches. Just not the right amount of inches that time. A little under 30 seconds left on the power play. Now the Colonials still trying to connect on one of its many power plays that they've had today. As Lynch navigates through traffic, he's going to be checked into the boards. The Friars come away with it, and they're going to clear this one. Ten seconds remaining on the power play. And it looks like the Friars are going to once again successfully kill another penalty. And that's what they do best. This puck's going to be sent over to Lynch and now down to Watt. Watt's going to get pent up on the glass. And now Davis comes away with it for the Friars. That one's going to be sent up and over to number nine, Duheim. And a couple shots taken in front of the net. None of them is going to connect home. And now Conway. Conway's trying to wrap around and get it more out. But great defense by number six, Nick Jenny. Now the Friars threatening in Robert Moore's territory, but Robert Moore's defense has been stifling so far this period. The Friars can't get into the middle of that zone like they did in the first period, and this shot's going to be sent up and into the net behind the goal. A great defense there by Jenny. Just, you know, a Providence guy lost the puck, and he made sure to play that decoy of let him not find it because I think we're looking maybe at a 2-1 game if he was able to you know, get that two pass, obviously get that, look, it was near getting past Marat as we see that replay that was very, 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 very close. But yeah, but, uh, you know, that defense for the Cody right now for the, in its period so far has really stepped up. Nick Jenny was in hot pursuit of that one. And now the Friars is able to maintain that one in the shot, fired towards Marat, and that one's going to go right into his chest.
as Eric Foley tried to take the shot at Marat. Marat playing Ben Don't Break goalie. Probably frustrated with himself that the one rebound was able to go home, but other than that, we have a faceoff to the left of him. As Ferguson wins another faceoff for the Colonials. Now the Colonials are going to try and get this one out of their territory and get into Providence. But Providence keeping the puck and now sending it down and over. A little bit of a scrum. Congress trying to see if he could come away with it for the Friars. More scrum, more pushing between Conger and Tonj. And now a quick pass and misfire by Conway. Conger, I'm sorry. And now Robert Morris on the break. That one's going to be sent towards hockey just to get a line change for the Colonials. And now Providence are back on the move. Pino with the puck. And that one's going to be sent over. And now Pino with the puck again. Sent over to Wilkins. Wilkins who had two assists yesterday. Huge check into the boards by the Friars. And now the Colonials have it. That's going to be number 15 for the Colonials. Dorowitz, and he's going to try and sneak that one past. Hockey, and that one's not going to go. He's going to corral that one. A little bit of pushing and shoving after that one. And like we said, the physicality in this game is its kind of hit or miss. Sometimes you'll see either a whole bunch of it or none at all. Yeah, usually, you know, my thing is in a game that you know, determine when they get the when they get the dip out because you know it's getting it's getting chippy in here. There's times when you know they look like you know these teams look like they're they're best friends down there. They're real kind to each other, the holiday cheer, but you know wishing each other a happy New Year. But now, you know, right there, you know, Luke Lynch kind of just had his you know stick in there playing to the whistle, and they took ex the Friars took exception to that and got up in his grill, up in his face about it and. So, you know, like you said, it's, you know, 50-50s, back and forth. Like, are the players, go, you can't determine if this game is chippy or not. You know, the, the aggression is there mm -hmm. sometimes, and it's, then it's, you know, not existent. Maybe so, as... Usually it's, it's usually it's one or the other. Maybe as the game goes on, now that it's a 1-1 game, the chippiness will pick up. Providence seeing themselves as one of the better schools in the NCAA with their eyes set on another NCAA title coming off one in 2015 as we have a face-off between Conway and Dorowitz and the Friars come away with that one. Now the Friars are going to send that one up. Duheim trying to get that one out of his hands. And now a bit of a scrum behind the net as Dorowitz comes away with it. And a lot of a lot of tugging behind the net as the Colonials come away with it. And now Powers on the offensive and he shoots one. That one's not going to go. And Lynch takes a shot and that one's not going to get between the pipes as Hockey corrals that one in as well. The Colonials playing stifling defense on their end. Not letting the Friars to even set up any type of offense. Four minutes, 17 seconds remaining in the second period. Like you said earlier in the first period, not a lot of stoppage. And these games are going by. These periods are going by quick. Yeah, you know, a, a relatively clean game. Nothing. You know, nothing that has, you know, the fans or the coaches chirping. I think it's, you know, it's a clean game called down the middle as a stick goes fly, hockey stick goes flying. And, you know, I mean, also, though, is that all? Is, it, 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 is that a bad thing, though, Dante? You know, players, you know, don't get the extra 30 seconds when the players go into the box or, you know, they can only rely on, you know, the media timeouts to kind of catch their breath. Maybe two teams of this caliber already know what's at stake here. Barbara Morris, like we said, the third oldest team 
in the nation in Providence, making the NCAA tournament the last four years. So both these teams know how to control their tempers and their emotions seem they've been at higher, higher stakes than most as we have a stoppage in play. And we're gonna have a face-off at center ice. It's gonna be Jacob Coleman for the Colonials losing that one to the Friars. Now the Friars possess it in Robert Moore's territory. That shot gets fired towards Murad. That one's not going to connect home. As the Colonials try and come away with it, rolling around behind the net. And the Friars step in and steal that one. Big check into the boards by the Colonials. And now the Colonials are on the move. That pass sent up to Watt. Watt unable to chase that one down. As Mirages was in hot pursuit for the Friars as well. And we're going to have a blown whistle. And they're gonna get they're gonna get Watt for a penalty. Brandon Watt for the Colonials. And now the Friars are on the power play for the first for the second time today. My apologies. On the flip, the Friars kill about 87.5% of their their penalties where the Colonials only kill 79% of the penalties. So maybe this is the opportunity the Friars were looking for. And this is, you know, a big moment with roughly three minutes to go here in the second period. You know, go into the lead. It'd be huge for the Friars. You know, big moment. We really, ha really haven't seen no Francis Murata a whole lot so far in the Colonials defense because they've been controlling the puck in the offensive zone. So a big moment here for this Colonials defense and Frankie Murata. Couple shots fired at Murat, and now the Friars still maintain possession. They're trying to wrap around the goalie, and that one's going to be sent back. And now sent over. Another shot ripped and fired over to Murat. Murat, that one's being too high. Now the puck being moved side to side, 5 on 4 hockey. Another shot fired. That one's going to go off the stick of a Colonials defender. The Friars still maintain possession. Friars trying to work the zone trying to get the Colonials to move. Now the pass inside, the pass over, the pass back over. And now another shot taken, and that one slips in. It's the original shot taken by Brian Pino. And that, you know. Bounces off Marat. Marat, you know. Slapped that puck out of that goal at the end there. He was very, take a second look at it here. He made the initial stop and then right under his midsection it squeaked past him between his legs when he went on his stomach there when he laid out. And just, you know, one of those goals that, you know, it, it stings a little bit because it initially was a stop, but it just squeaked, you know, past him. Maybe it was one of those things when he lays on it and it squirts through, gave enough, you know, Give enough uh, momentum there to to move the move the puck for the whistle was blown and made a, a, a official save. But you know a, a frustrating goal for the the Colonials gave up. There. Goal was given to number twenty Casper Bjorkwitz, a Pittsburgh Penguin draft pick, playing here at PPG Paints. Now the Friars are up two to one, and like you said, that pivotal power play that the Friars was on was huge here in the late late minutes here of the second period now the Friars take a 2-1 lead with a minute 30 left and now the and now there will be a face off down towards hockey's left we saw quick goals from the Colonials last night what a what a better time to get that to get, to get that theme rolling again you know tie this up before we for the two teams head into for the second intermission. I think that'll be good for the Colonials, you know, mindset to get this, you know, like a frustrating goal given up. You but you tie it up 2-2. There 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 there's no looking back, you know, gotta move on. 
as the Colonials win the faceoff and a shot taken towards hockey. That unable to fall. <clears throat> Now the Friars able to maintain possession. That one's going to be sent up. Now there's a three-on-two break. The Friars unable to connect on that one. Now the Friars still able to maintain possession. The Colonials, huge check. And now the Colonials come away with it. That's Tonja, I believe. And now the Colonials are going to have to retreat to avoid an offsides penalty as the Friars poke that one away. <clears throat> Now Ferguson with the puck. That one's going to be poked away from him. Check into the boards, and now the Friars have possession. They're bringing it up. That one's going to be sent up. Young with the puck for the Friars. And still no shot. And now a big, big scrum, a bunch of checking into the boards. Now the Friars come right back with it, and that was going to be a one-on-one -on -one situation with Marat. But the Colonials able to poke that one away. The Friars doing a better job late in the second period, keeping the Colonials out of their zone. And that's going to be it for this second period where the Friars take a 2-1 lead after the Colonials put one home. And now we're going into the third intermission. And what did you see in that second period now that we saw the tempo start to pick up a little bit? Yeah, definitely, definitely the Colonials gave up the you know, goal, but they scored a goal. Um, you know, definitely won that period. But uh, however, we gave the, you know, the Friars their second opportunity in the power play. And, you know, they, they capitalized. And that, you know, can't happen. Uh, when you're not scoring on the power play, you know, you can't give them chances. They, we saw them struggle five on five, and then when they get the opportunity with a man up, they take advantage, and that just can't happen. I think, you know, the, that, you know that stings. That really does sting, you know, for, you know, Colonial, the Colonials and the Colonials fans here. But I think if they limit, you know, the penalties, they play a little, you know, smarter because they know that the Friars can capitalize, and I think they'll be good. You know, patient, don't do much, take smarter shots, and they I think they, believe they took some smaller shots, crashed net a little better, and I think if they keep that up, I think, you know, they're definitely going to tie this game up and hopefully get that third goal or even send this, to, send this to overtime. We'll be back here for the third period and the final period, maybe, where the Friars have the Colonials 2-1. to one. We'll be back right after the intermission report. Two periods of play here at the Three Rivers Classic at PPG Paints Arena. This game is between the Friars and the Colonials. I'm Matt Simkovic. Alongside me is... Morgan Torsha. Morgan, second period, uh, kind of a quiet period. Let's get your thoughts on that first. <laughs> well, I'm no pun intended here, but the Colonials definitely seem to have a problem. That's for sure. <laughs> I, I would agree wholeheartedly with that. <laughs> Uh, the question is here, Matt, though, what is the problem? Uh, <laughs> well, in my humble opinion here, of I course. think that the Colonials are just, they're just not playing their own style of game. They picked it up on all the power plays. Uh, on one of them, uh, they were able to score. The goal came from Riley Risling, uh, assists from Nick Jenny and Ferguson, which 
uh, continues his point streak, Brady Ferguson there. Mm -hmm. um, and then in another one, uh, we had really good zone time. Uh, the Colonials did. They kept the pressure on the Friars the entire time. Uh, there's There was another one. Uh, there was a lot of penalties for Providence in that game, or in that period, I should mm -hmm. say. But uh, another one, uh, there was a scrum in front, and the puck ended up going off the post, but not into the net. Um, a little note I have here, I just want to see if you would agree or if you have any comments on there. Luke Lynch seems to be getting a little bit hot-headed. Uh, the Friars are really keying in on that. Yeah. And they're having people aim for him with little cheap mm. shots after the whistle, whether it be a cross-check or a slash or yeah. something that they say to him. It started off, well, you even said down there, and then I said it up here. He started off really strong, but I think that's kind of taken a turn, and it's no longer he's coming here to please come in here to like be strong and play well. It's starting to go to his head a little bit because yeah. he came out so well. But uh, you're right, though. I They're definitely agree. capitalizing on that. Yeah, so that would just be something to watch out for. Uh, that's something that Coach probably has to tell him in the locker room. Just watch, calm down, calm down make sure you keep your head on straight and uh, you don't take any selfish penalties. That's something that we certainly don't want to see here because the uh, second Providence goal ended up coming on the power play. Mm -hmm. So what do you think they need to do? Wh well, I should rephrase that. What do you think the Friars need to do to keep their streak up? Uh, the Friars just need to keep playing their game. They're doing a very good job at playing Friars hockey. They come out, they hit, they get under skin, as you can see they're doing here. Uh, they're putting the puck in the net. The Friars are playing an overall good game. Mm -hmm. uh, the Colonials, that's not saying that the Colonials aren't. It's just saying that the Friars seem to be playing really well. So if, I w if I'm the Friars head coach, I would just tell uh, my team, just keep it up. You know, they're playing all right. Of course, there's going to be little things you can work on, you know, uh, but other than that, I think that they're playing a great game. Both teams are. The Colonials seem to be playing really well, too. Yeah, I mean, again, not being your yes man, but I do agree <laughs> with you on that. So this is uh, this would be a third win streak um, for Robert Morris for the Three Rivers Classic. Yes. Champ uh, excuse me, for the Three Rivers Classic. What does that mean if they would lose it this year? Uh, I don't think it means that much, honestly, if they lose it. Um I was just looking over their roster, though, and I would watch out because they, they're kind of an offensive team, this, uh, this senior class here. I'm just going to read some names off. You have Brady Ferguson, Timmy Moore, Spencer Dorowitz, um, Alex Bonjay, and who was the other one? Elias Gontus. Uh, those are all guys that you're going to be losing next year. And when you look at um, the core of Robert Morris' offense, uh, there's – Younger guys stepping up, like Luke Lynch, he's only a sophomore. Uh, Mike Loria. Mm -hmm. But that's something that you uh, – Nick Jenny had a goal yesterday, but that's something that you definitely need to watch out is they're going to be losing a lot of talent this year, and that won't just affect them in next year's Three Rivers Classic, but it will carry into the entire season. Uh, they're losing arguably one of the most talented senior classes they've had in a while. Um, so I would just watch out for that, uh, make sure that they do some good recruiting and development in the off season. All right, well – the third period is our th period, so we'll be able to see if we uh, we bring that back here. But Let's any hope. Let's yeah, hope. any final thoughts before we wrap this up? Uh, final thoughts? Not much. Just it's going to be like I said for the other two periods. It's just going to be a really interesting game, and it's still close here, even though the Friars have uh, nine shots up on the Colonials right now. But I would be interested to see how this game turns out. All right. Well, Morgan Torsha. Alongside Matt Simkovic. This is our final intermission report. We will be back for a post game, but for now, you're listening to RMU Radio. Your campus, your voice.
Two down, one to go here in the third period where Providence has taken a 2-1 lead over the Robert Morris Colonials. In that last period, we saw Riley Wrestling getting one to go for the Robert Morris Colonials three minutes into that period. And then at the end of the period, we saw Casper Bjorkvich get one to go home. And now Providence leads 2-1. to one. Robert Morris Colonials cannot connect on any of the penalties. The Friars now five penalties on the day. And the Colonials only have two. But Providence able to connect on, their one, on the one power play in that second period. And now we have championship hockey, so to say. Now Robert Morris in a little bit of desperation mode, seeing if they come out with a little bit of fight. Yeah, I mean... I think the you know that fight needs to be towards the net because we saw the Colonials not do that in the first period. No goal. Better there in the second period. There were only about two shots that you know, were you could say were near maybe three that were near the their blue line in their offensive zone, but you know, crashing that a little better. And what happened when, when that when that goal, you know, eventually went in for the Colonials? Crashing the net. You know, being aggressive at hockey, the goalie for Providence and you know tied up at one. Unfortunately, the Colonials gave up that second goal on the power play opportunity the Friars had. But yeah, I thought they crashed the net, and I think the Colonials will find success. I think uh, what you're trying to say is that the Colonials need to crash the net <laughs> a little bit. And uh, um, but yeah, other than that, that second period, the Colonials played very well offensively and defensively. It was just that last three minute mark, which you pointed out, as soon as the Colonials got that penalty that was going to change this game and that's something that we'll look at if the Friars are able to take this one as Dorowitz loses that one and the Friars clear this one out sending the Colonials to go chase that one Nick Jenny gonna send that one back to Alex Bonje. Bonjay is going to send that one over and across. Now back over and across to Dorowitz. Dorowitz trying to split a couple of defenders. Now Graham in pursuit. Couple of shots taken at the net, bouncing off. And now sent back a shot, ripped at the blue line. And that one's going to go right into the chest of hockey. Sean Giles taking his chance. 18-12 left to play here in the third in championship period. Going to be a face-off two hockeys left. In that last period, Robert Morris had won face-offs 11-9. And the Colonials also outshot the Friars as a shot taken. That one's going to be deflected off a Friar stick. There's a move made, making a defender fall by a Friar. And they're going to get a whistle blown. And we're going to have offsides, I believe. Yeah, I mean, I don't think, you know, Providence is definitely not going to back off here. With the, I have two and one leads. The Cardinals just need to keep bringing pressure, I think. You put pressure, I think you're going to crack this team. I think, you know, you can also, you know, you can argue as both ways. You can say the Colonials are tired, but you can say Providence is tired too, you know what I mean? Going into their, you know, sixth period of hockey in 48 hours, I think is a team that, you know, you, Providence team, if you crack them, I think you can, uh, you know, the Colonials can win this game. Definitely a battle of resilience, and now the Colonials are on the move as the shot's taken. That's going to be number nine, Daniel Montenudo. Montenudo unable to get that one to go. Now Graham in pursuit as the Friars come away with that. And now the puck sent back up to Robert Morris. And now Robert Morris maintains it. And now Graham in pursuit of the puck. That one is going to be a bit of a scrum. Mirage is coming in to cause some havoc with Graham. And now the Friars come away with that. And they're going to send this one up off the boards down to Robert Morris. And the Colonials come back away with it. Now the Colonials are on the move. Eric Israel trying to weave his way through traffic. 
as the Friars come back away with that. It's going to be Jacob Bryson. Bryson's going to send this one up towards Marat. Marat's going to deflect this one away and try to get it to another Colonial. But the Friars coming up, and now they're on the offensive in the Robert Morris territory, and they're going to try to move the puck through this zone. As the shot's taken, that's going to be wide left of the Friars. Another shot taken at Marat. That one's going to go right into his pads and bounce right off. Now the Friars keeping this one in play on the Robert Morris side. Robert Morris defense still stifling as they were in that second period. A shot taken by number five, Tommy Davis for the Friars. That one unable to connect home. Because we're going to have a whistle blown. It looks like we're going to get another offsides on the Friars. Friars now lead the Colonials 27 to 20 in shots. Yeah, like, you know, like you said, you know, you're not gonna, you know, score goals if you don't, you know, put shots on goal and the Colonials were sitting down in single digits for a while where it looked like it was gonna be one of those other games, you know, for the, you know, in this three of his classic where one team just gets, every game just gets pounded you know, with shots against for them, but now able to close it within seven. As the Colonials chase this one back behind Marat, they're trying to clear this one out, but the Friars maintain possession as that shot gets fired, but unable to even hit the post. Now the Friars get another opportunity in front of that. That one unable to go home. And now the Colonials are on the move. Alex Bonge, he's going to be checked into the boards by number 17, Shane Cavanaugh. Now the Colonials are able to clear it and get a line change. But they're going to get an icing call anyway. 15.42 left to play here in this third period. We talk about the Robert Morris Colonials against ranked opponents. The Colonials 21, 28, and 3 versus ranked opponents all time. 0 and 2 this season. Both of those losses coming against Penn State in a series. But they were 3 1 and 1 last year. And one of those wins were against Quinnipiac in the Three Rivers Classic Championship. As the Colonials come away with this one, Ferguson's going to send that one up. And the Fire's going to take back possession. Now O'Neal, O'Neal's going to send that one behind the net. And now the Colonials are on the move, but the Friars take this one right back. Now the Friars looking to set up some offense as they push it forward. Now into Robert Moore's territory is O'Neal just pushing to clear that. And now they make a line change. As the Friars maintain possession. Quick passing by the Friars. There's a quick shot, a quick wraparound shot by the Friars. That one unable to go. A couple of fans wanting a tripping call. And we're going to get an icing call. Now the Colonials able to finally get the puck out from in front of Francis Marat. Marat's probably happy about that. He's seen too many shots flying in front of his face recently. What I saw, you know, I saw good play by uh, number 21 there, Robert, Robert Powers. I mean, not even letting the puck get even close to, to Frankie. And, I mean, that, that you know, that's key, you know, moving forward in this game, you know, protect the goalie. Don't let, you know, cheap shots, you know, some weak shots, you know, come in when he's, you know, outnumbered. So, with a good defense of, you know, looks like some fire momentum, but good defense for the Colonials and that play by uh, Robert Powers to break things up. Friars are able to come away with that face off. And that one will be able to be cleared. Robert Morris to go back in and get that one as they try to set up a little bit of offense. So that one sent up to Montenudo. Montenudo is just going to get this one out of his hands. Now the Colonials have possession over in Providence territory. Nick Perkusik unable to make any hay. And now Providence maintains possession. The 
the puck's back over to Robert Morris, and Robert Morris is just going to clear this in Ferguson in pursuit, but this is going to stay with Providence. Providence are doing a good job of just running out the clock. They're moving the puck very, very quickly. Because Robert Morris has possession, a big check into the boards. Kavanaugh sending a Colonial into the boards. It's Ferguson disrupts that pass. Now the Colonials are in Providence territory. A shot taken in front of Hockey. That one unable to go. Number 20, Timmy Moore tried to send that one over to Brady Ferguson to sneak one in, but that was unable to go. Now pass sent over to Alex Tonge. Tonge going to put it in to Ferguson. Ferguson's going to move. He's going to send that one over to Powers. Powers unable to maintain possession of it. And they're going to get Robert Morris for offsides. Puck has been bouncing around loosely a lot lately in this third period. Yeah, Timmy Moore not happy. It's like he's chirping at the, some friar. Oh, you know, going to the bench. He was not happy with that call as he flicked the puck up to the referee. Point was looking like some good momentum was happening there. And the referees, you know, said no, no, no. And, you know, it's, you know, that type of play, you know, I mean, momentum, you can't, you can't, you know, suffer a penalty like the like offsides call there. Because these refs are on top of it, you know, not... They're, you know, they're letting him play, but they're also calling the things they not, they're not overly blowing their whistles. So, you know, you're not gonna, they're gonna call what they, you know, what, what they see and what they think's gonna, you know, affect this game. And, you know, offsides, they've been calling a few of those so far in this game. We have seen a couple of offsides penalties, but one thing that we will always look at is going to be that goal that the Colonials gave up with about a minute and a half left to go in that third period to Casper Bjorkvich. And the Friars maintain possession off the faceoff. About 12.30 left to play here in the third period. Now the Colonials are, and Friars are fighting down on the Colonials end. The Colonials come away with it. And that one's going to be sent up. And the Colonials are going to come back away with that. That's going to be Luke Lynch. And the Colonials give it right back to the Friars, but the Colonials take it right back. Lynch takes the puck, waiting for everybody to get on sides, but he loses the puck. And now another one of the, those offside penalties where... The Colonials get a steal and it bounces over into the onto their side and they're they're caught. The Colonials got two offsides penalties in a row. And now we'll have another face off. It's gonna be Conway and Montenudo. Conway for the Friars, Montenudo for the Colonials facing off. Conway comes away with it for the Friars. Now the Friars are trying to move. They get up in Robert Moore's ter territory. They send the shot. That one doesn't connect home. Now the Colonials maintain possession. Graham. It's going to be knocked off a, a stick of a Friar. Now the Colonials maintain possession. It's Elias Gantus. That's going to be sent up in a round and back towards Providence. And the Colonials unable to get any offense going here in this third period as Providence has stayed all on them, not trying to surrender this lead as the Colonials try to clear it, but that's going to be batted down by the Friars, and they're going to get them for that. Yeah, you saw Matthew Graham you know, moving the puck with Perkusik a few moments ago, but just both players working too fast. I mean, you know, the panic mode is setting in here with a little over five seconds here in the five seconds over 11 minutes here in the third period. Maybe, you know, the panic button may be pushed in some of these 
you know, Colonial's heads. But definitely when the Colonials have been patient and have been, you know, crashing the net and not trying to do too much, that's when they've been able to score score their goal in this game. So if they want to tie this up, they, they have to be patient here. One thing if you are the Colonials that if you score one goal, it is now a tie, a now a tie game. So you don't trail by much. You just have to get one in. So now the Colonials have the puck in Providence territory. Is that shot's going to be taken by Ferguson? That one's not going to connect. And now Kavanaugh on the offensive is Tonge is going to check Kavanaugh into the boards, and the Colonials come away with it. But that puck's given right back to the Friars, which is given right back to the Colonials. As Jenny chasing that one down and running away from a couple of fly Friars, now weaving his way through traffic. That one was sent over to Timmy Moore. Moore tried to get that one to Ferguson. That one was knocked away. And now the Colonials had to chase that one back and go get it. Now Powers trying to weave his way away from a, a Friar defender, and he's just going to clear it and give the Friars a chance. But then now we're going to get an icing call. Nine minutes, 59 seconds left here in the third period. The Friars lead the Colonials 2-1 to one still. The Friars have eight NHL draft picks on their roster. One of the most that any Colonials team have seen. The Colonials come away with the faceoff, and there's going to be a check in a little bit. And now the Colonials try to get a wrap around. They try to get a rebound. And there's going to be a scrum in front of the goalie net, and Hockey's going to come away with that. Riley Rissling tried to get a wrap around goal on Hockey. And then Luria tried to get the rebound, but unable to get that one behind him. Big time save there, because it looked like it was going to be an easy goal for the Colonials. We'll just take a second look at it. And boom, right there. But he was able to find hockey that was able to find the puck where it was and, and be a shield for that puck. And there was, you know, one of the Colonials there put the stick over his head in, you know, frustration. Like, that was a beautiful opportunity to tie this thing up. But a beautiful play by Hockey in front of everybody. And that is a big time save for number 31 and a draft pick of the Montreal Canadiens. Hockey pitched his shutout yesterday. That was his third shutout of the year. And the Friars have a penalty, and they're going to get... Number five, Tommy Davis for holding. He's going to be in the penalty box for two minutes. As that's the Friars' sixth penalty going into yesterday. The Friars had 224 penalties. That tallied up to over 400 minutes of time. But the Colonials unable to come away with any goals. Now the Colonials back on the power play as the Friars just tried to clear this one out. Luria moving into Friar territory. That puck is going to go to a Friar, and he's just going to clear this one out. That was number 18, Jacob Bryson. That sent Eric Israel to go back and get that one. Israel bringing the puck up. That one's going to be sent over to Alex Tonge. Puck's going to sail behind the net, and the Friars once again clearing the puck. It's one thing that the Colonials could not prep for is how well that this Friars team can kill a penalty. Again, Taunt. right there. Tonge tried to weave his way through traffic, unable to do that, and the Friars clear it again. And now Israel sent right back to go chase it. And Israel's going to bring it up. Sent it over to Tonge. And now Graham with it. Graham's going to move back. And now the Colonials is able to set up a little bit of offense. And that puck's going to be sent back to Montenudo. Montenudo setting up. And that puck's going to be sent over to Lynch. Lynch takes a shot. And that one's going to be saved by Hockey. Again, great awareness by number 31. Hayden Hockey. 
Realizes where the puck was, then let it squirt too far from him. And covers it up to prevent a, a, a last ditch effort by Luke Lynch to get that behind him. That was Daniel Montenuto with the shot, my apologies. Hard to see the numbers from up here. And that quick pass from Montenuto to Graham tried to get that one home, but that was a little far off right. Now the Colonials still have the puck on the offensive. Another pass, and that one misfired. The Colonials wishing they can have both of those back, but the Colonials, they feel like they got something. There's a scrum behind the net, and now a shot taken towards hockey. That one's going to be misfired. And now another scrum, and that one's going to be in the hands of Montenuto. Montenuto moving back, and that puck's going to be sent over and towards the middle. And a sh another shot taken, that one, again, misfired by the Colonials. Colonials still maintain possession as Colonials trying to get some fresh bodies out there. As now the penalty has ran out, and the Friars are at full strength. That was a beautiful mindset for the Colonials with Graham crashing the net. But again, half a minute of that penalty, um, power play opportunity was the Friars easily just sending it back down to Murat on the other end. As there was a shot right there and that one couldn't go home and that was Jacob Coleman. So maybe if the Colonials had the full two minutes they could use of that power play. This game may have been tied but a minute of it was them just not you know, looking comfortable and having the kill of the skate down, skate back, reset and doing it all over again about three times. Yeah, the Friars did a really good job Especially right there, that was probably the Friars' best penalty kill of the game. They wasted a lot of time just clearing the puck out and trying to buy themselves some time as the Colonials keep the puck down on this side. And now the Friars have a breakaway that's going to be number 15, Josh Wilkins, but he's unable to come up with it and now Brady Ferguson on the offensive he takes a shot tried to go upstairs that one couldn't go and now Cavanaugh tries to clear that one out but Tonge comes away with it and now the Colonials back with the puck trying to set up a little bit of offense Tonge now in the middle he tries to weave his way through traffic good defense by the Friars that's going to be number five Tommy Davis all over Tonge not getting him going and now Eric Israel trying to weave his way and trying to get a shot off. He's unable to pass back over to Tonj. Tonj tries to take a shot. Hockey makes a great save. As Timmy Moore tried to push a defender through and get him in front of the eyes of Hockey. Hockey finds that, finds that puck and corrals it. And what it looked like up here is he actually thought that puck may have been going past him. I think it was a surprise that he was able to get that in his glove and secure it. Cause it looked like he was his body was moving towards he was about to play it off the wall watch it ricochet off the wall but it actually was in his patty and it's kind of stop himself another big save by hockey he had to make sure that one was in his in his glove if he thought that one was going towards the wall you better be glad he caught it because that <laughs> one would end up in the back of the net now the friars get in robin moore's territory a couple a couple of body checks and now Luke Lynch on the move. And the Friars just trying to clear this one out. Now the puck giving back to Robert Morris. As Robert Morris makes a line change. And now the Friars with the puck. And the Friars just going to send this one right back to Robert Morris. Puck's sent over to Bonjay. Bonjay sends that one down. Graham in pursuit of it. Graham's almost got tripped right there. No penalty. And now Bonjay comes away with the puck. Bonjay in a, in a bit of a scrum with another Friar. That's going to be number nine, Duheim. Duheim playing great defense for the Friars, being all over the place recently. <clears throat> Colonials come away with it, trying to get back on the offensive. It's going to be number 16, Perkusik. Perkusik unable to maintain possession of it, but he plays great defense, and he's able to get the puck back now he's scrummed up on the wall and the Colonials are able to come away with it but another tussle against the wall and now the Friars come away with it 
The fire is going to send this one up off the glass back over to the Colonials. Israel is going to send a pass over to Powers. And now they're going to get a penalty, I believe. No penalty. My apologies. It looks like they're going to get Robert Morris for offsides. Because we have a uh, probably the last manual stoppage of play. Four minutes, 21 seconds left here in the third period. The Robert Morris Colonials are going to look to probably pull Marat out of the net here pretty soon. And we saw in that last game the Lakers were able to get one, get a cheap one in on Arizona State and make that one 4-1 to one on an empty netter. Yeah, I think he Derek Schooley, if you're going to school anything around two minute mark, I think that's when you start bringing one, one goal game. I mean, you know, if you want to win this game, I think the, you're having trouble getting any sort of offense right now. So to put an extra guy on there doesn't hurt. I think the players have done a good job keeping the puck away from the net. So you don't have to worry about an easy, obviously, an open net. Any team can, you know, shoot it down there and it has a great chance of going in. but. I think the Colonials are good chances of, you know, protecting it. They're playing good defense, only the puck get quite down there. So put that extra man on there definitely would be a, a huge advantage. The Colonials definitely had their chances of opportunities there on the power play, getting a couple of quick dives to the net by Graham, but none of them able to connect on the pass as it's just going to be a big scrum on the faceoff, and it's just going to be sent down towards the Robert Morris net, and this is going to be called for icing. And now we're going to have a face-off to the right of hockey. Hopefully, Robert Morris can win the face-off and get some type of offense going here. As Ferguson unable to come away with it. And they're going to get Timmy Moore for smacking the puck can't do that sir now we have another face off closer to center ice and the Friars come away with it now the Friars are moving. They're going to send this one up towards Marat. And now the Friars, they're just playing defensive at this point. They're up one. They're not going to try and look for anything too crazy. But now Robert Morris in pursuit. They're trying to come away with the puck. They do come away with the puck. That one's going to be sent upstairs, and that's not going to fall. So Robert Morris tried to get another quick goal. That one knocked away by a Friar. And now Conway on the move for the Friars. That one taken away by Eric Israel. Israel trying to bend his way through past a fryer. And he's checked into the boards. Yeah, you brought up Providence not, you know, doing too much offensive. I mean, you know, kind of you know, why would they? Because you don't need another goal to win this game. They have that. What doesn't win this game is them giving up a goal. So definitely a defensive-minded approach there. You know, I mean, they're not, you know, that shows a good team not trying to, you know, rub it in. Not trying to, you know, rack up the score, see, you know, rack up points. Some, you know, selfless play here by by the Friars. And it seems like the Friars know what type of team they're playing. They can play this Robert Morris team. And Robert Morris is very capable of putting up scores in bunches. So the Friars are probably just trying to get out of here with a win. Because we're going to get another icing call. We're going to get another face-off in front of hockey. This is going to be once again to his right. Three minutes, 14 seconds left to play. The Colonials have closed the gap on shots. It's now 30-6. to six. Still, the Friars lead. Now the puck finally drops on the face-off, and the Friars come away with it again. The Friars are winning a lot of the face-offs this period. We saw Robert Morris win the majority of them that last period, but the Friars coming away with the big, crucial ones as of late. 
Ferguson now with the puck. He's going to send that one back over to Ferguson. Ferguson can't make nothing happen as he runs into two Friar defenders. Friars are just going to push this one up. Now up and over. That's going to be Pino. Pino by himself. He's controlling it. He's being defended well by a Colonial. And a big check into the boards by a Friar. Timmy Moore got sent into the boards from the Colonials. The puck is just sitting in front of Marad. That one's going to be knocked away from him. Now this one's going to be sent up on the boards. Now back to Providence. Providence killing a lot of time. Now two minutes, 15 seconds left to play. And now the Colonials still unable to get any get the puck at all and now that puck's going to be sent down to Providence territory as the Colonials make a line change. The Colonials still have yet to pull Marat out. They haven't had a chance yet because the puck has been sitting in front of Marat these last couple of minutes. Now the Colonials are looking to push. The Colonials are able to push. They get that one up and over and they do pull Marat. Marat is now coming out. They do have an empty net but the Friars are able to come away with possession. But no, the Colonials still got possession. Now there is an empty net. And Robert Morris is still able to maintain possession. Friars have it against the boards. Giving up to Robert Morris. Friars going to knock that one away. They tried to get that one up on the boards. They couldn't do it. Now the Colonials trying to set up some offense. Six on five. And that one's going to be sent down towards Graham. Graham, great defense by Conway for the Friars. My apologies. It's going to be Jacob Bryson. And now big scrum. And now the Friars have it. And there's a three on two. But the Colonials come away with it. 40 seconds left to play. Now the Colonials are going to have to push the tempo. Providence is picking up their defense. Graham has the puck now sent over to Timmy Moore. Timmy Moore takes his shot, but that one unable to connect. Hockey playing great for the Friars as of late. Robert Moore tries to set up a shot, and that one unable to go. That was number six, Nick Jenny. Jenny unable to connect on that one as the Friars come away with it, and they try to get a quick cheat no empty netter. And time is probably going to run out for the Robert Morris Colonials as the Friars are milking the clock. And that's going to be it. The Providence Friars have came in to their first Three Rivers Classic and they've came out victorious. They've defeated the Robert Morris Colonials by a score of 2-1. to one. They had a goal by Scott Conway in the first period the Colonials answered with a goal by Riley Rissling and then Casper Bjorkwitz with the game winning goal the Pittsburgh Penguin draft pick he's able to get that one in the Colonials unable to close this one out Ian last minute thoughts it stings I mean it stings it stings because uh the goal was a you know a power play goal like we keep reiterating ourselves. You know, sound like a broken record when we say that, you know, that, that period they were playing great defense. Uh Conos and they gave up that goal. Um but yeah, this one stings, but a positive here. Beginning of the year, you you could say the Conos no way could compete in this game. A ranked opponent, no way, even at Penn State, a ranked 20, top twenty opponent a few weeks ago, you know, Lost 5-2, five, five, I believe, and then 7-4. But they have fight in that game, and now they came, you know, the, their three-game winning streak. But this has changed team since then, since those Penn State games. And I think this team has really showed some some grit and some, you know, um, they faced some adversity, and they've come they've come to, uh, you know, they, they've come to play the past few the past two games. You know, 2-1. I mean, you can first say this game was, you know, could have gone – any direction, and unfortunately, it was you know it was a power play goal that that settled things here. And the Colonials do pick things up after the Three Rivers Classic, but that's going to be all from here. We still have our post game show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
every pill But still all we do is fear What could possibly happen next? Can we focus on the love? Paint my kiss across your chest If you're the art, I'll be the brush Ooh. Ended up winning by a score of two to one. What are your thoughts on the game in general and uh, the third period? Well, the third period, not a lot. Pretty boring. Not much happened. I I disagree with you, you disagree there. Disagree with me I there. do. Uh, right around with ten minutes left, halfway through the period, uh, I think it was at like nine forty ish. Uh, the Friars took a penalty and that put the Colonials on the power play. Um, I saw the Colonials make. A lot better passes. They were really crashing the net more. Um, they really picked up their game. They, you could tell they really wanted this game more mm -hmm. than uh, they had shown in the first two periods. You know what, though? They've won it the past two years. You can't, you can't have it all. You can't, yeah, you have can't, it all. You can't win every one. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we're looking at right now is the Confluence Cup being presented to the Providence College Friars. Yeah. I mean, again, like I said, they can't win it all, but that's definitely got to sting a little bit being at home, your tournament, and you're not walking right with the cup. Yeah, time. but another thing you have to keep in mind, though, is Providence is nationally ranked. Oh, absolutely. They're absolutely. a very absolutely. renowned program, especially when it comes mm. to hockey. Um, but they are very, uh, you know, they're ranked, and they deserve to be there for a reason. Mm. Um, of course. So they came out, and they played. I'm actually – quite impressed that the Colonials held them to a two-to-one game. Mm, yeah. uh, I feel like RMU played really well um, throughout this whole weekend, and especially today. Um, yesterday, they were kind of favorited to win. Yeah, it wasn't like they won by a landslide or anything. It yeah. Was, it was a good game. It was a, it was a good close two-to-one game, and even mm -hmm. there, uh, they didn't even get an empty net. Yeah. So there really wasn't any nail in the coffin, and they were fighting up until mm -hmm. literally the last second. Yeah, and for it to be this close of a game with a nationally ranked team, that just shows like how good RMU can become. Yeah. Oh, uh, I and feel how like good they are. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel say. like uh, you know, last year we made it to the AHC semifinals. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very. Oh yeah. Uh, we're definitely getting up there, but like I said, this is going to be uh, our most talented graduating class that we've seen in a while. Uh, mm -hmm. So the all-tournament team they just announced uh, is Nick Kosoff from Lake Superior State in net. Um, the D-men are Jacob Brierson of uh, the Friars, and uh, there was one Arizona defenseman, but then on the line for the forwards, Brady Ferguson was on there. Uh, no what, did, what did you see from him this weekend that you uh, I definitely liked? I saw him uh, 
I'd say a little bit make a comeback from being inconsistent at the beginning of the season. So, I mean, obviously he's gotten so much better as the season's going on, but we saw, I think, today the Brady Ferguson that RMU loves, which is the corniest way I can put it, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it definitely was, but I feel like you summed it up great, that's <laughs> for sure. Uh, so, uh, you're right, it does sting to see the uh, Confluence Cup end up going to an opponent, but that just means that, that the Colonials will want it even more next year. Oh, for sure. Uh, maybe start a new streak and <laughs> maybe get you three after that. All right, Matt, so this is a wrap. This is a wrap, then, <laughs> from the Three Rivers Classic 2017 edition played at PPG Paints Arena. I am Matt Simkovic alongside me. Morgan Torsha, as always. As always, this has been RMU Radio, where it is your campus, your voice.